sugar, flour, bread. Jin, how much do you have in savings? I am 29 and I have absolutely nothing in my savings. The economy is so bad that companies are downsizing. With the cost of living experienced globally, I can't say for sure what the future holds. I've got some clips with people sharing their experiences. But before we dive in, I need you to subscribe to this channel, give a like and turn on the notification bell to get updated when we post a new video. If that's done, let's get started. I'm not lying in bed all day because I'm depressed. I'm lying in bed all day because I'm broke and I can't afford to do anything else. Sugar, flour, bread. Those are basic food. Eggs, you can't buy eggs. Even lime, you could have got a 50 pence lime, now it's a pound. Everything is going up. Clothes and things, they're not going up because you don't need clothes, but you need food. Wages doesn't go up. In the COVID time, I put my life on, on the line to save other people. But yet still, I get no thanks, nothing. My wages doesn't go up. My children can't find food. You used to eat, you used to eat three times a day. No, you have to limit it to one time a day. In 2023, life felt simpler. Basic groceries like bread, eggs, and a gallon of milk were essentials that I could easily pick up at the store for less than $20. I remember strolling into my favorite store, greeted by the comforting aroma of freshly baked cookies and the inviting warmth of a steaming cup of coffee. Treating myself to a cookie and a cup of coffee was a small indulgence, an everyday pleasure that brought a sense of comfort and familiarity. But last week, as I walked into the same store, something felt different. The shelves seemed sparse, and the once affordable cookies now sported price tags that had doubled. I hesitated, torn between my craving for that sweet treat and the realization that I couldn't justify the expense. Reluctantly, I settled for just a cup of coffee, the aroma no longer as enticing without the promise of a warm cookie to accompany it. As I sipped my coffee, I couldn't help but reflect on how quickly things had changed. The rising cost of living had crept into even the simplest pleasures, reminding me of the fragility of economic stability. The days of carefree indulgence seemed like a distant memory, replaced by a newfound awareness of the value of every dollar spent. At that moment, I realized that the story of my trip to the store was more than just a tale of a missed cookie. It was a snapshot of the shifting realities of life in an ambivalent world. Addressing the cost of living epidemic requires comprehensive strategies at the local, state, and federal levels, including measures to increase affordable housing options, reduce healthcare costs, alleviate student loan debt, and address income inequality. High utility bills and taxes have risen to become significant contributors to the overall cost of living in many regions. Utility bills, including electricity, water, heating, and cooling, constitute a substantial portion of monthly expenses for households. Factors such as energy prices, climate conditions, and infrastructure costs also influence the affordability of utilities, particularly in areas with extreme weather or aging infrastructure. Jin, how much do you have in savings? I am 29 and I have absolutely nothing in my savings. <laughs> so how much do you think you should have by like 30? I feel like I don't necessarily like care to have savings. So how much would I want in savings by the time I'm 30? Like nothing. I'd rather spend my money now, like when I have it. Credit score is 800. I'll be 25 in two fucking weeks. Yet my car insurance in the last two years went from 220 to 270, now to 320. Jeez. I give them a call. They said, sir, there's nothing we can do. We're getting calls. Our phones are off the fucking hook because people all over the place apparently their insurance went up too am i alone in this fucking shit but not not for nothing <laughs> i'm paying nearly 800 900 dollars a month for a nissan rogue sport <laughs> Do you not, i'm paying a thousand dollars a month to not look masculine at all two years ago i barely noticed the cost of my car insurance a mere blip in my monthly expenses but as i glanced at my recent bill I couldn't believe my eyes. The cost had tripled. Skyrocketing to a figure that felt unjustifiable for a car that hadn't gained an ounce of appreciation. 
It was a stark reminder of the relentless march of inflation, a force that seemed to spare no aspect of my financial life. With each passing year, the cost of living seemed to climb higher and higher, outpacing any increase in income or savings. How was I supposed to keep up with the ever-increasing demands on my wallet, especially when it seemed like every aspect of my financial life was being squeezed by inflation's relentless grip? While insurance provides financial protection against unexpected events, high premiums can strain individuals' budgets, especially if opted for comprehensive coverage or multiple insurance policies. Balancing the need for adequate coverage with affordability can be challenging, leading some individuals to forego insurance or opt for lower coverage levels, which can increase their financial risk in the event of a crisis. People are going to not be prioritizing owning things. Think about the amount of people that you see on TikTok that are going off grid, buying tiny homes, buying land and putting the tiny homes there and figuring out how to get all the resources themselves. People that are living in vans and RVs and aren't kind of like doing things their way. It's becoming more and more apparent that people aren't prioritizing owning. They just want to be away from the system, the system of having a home and doing everything the way that America was built for us to do. Eventually people's priorities are going to shift and it's not going to be the way that it always was. AKA renting might become a norm because people don't want to be tied down to anything. The world is not what it once was and we kind of just have to get used to that. The desire for flexibility and avoiding long-term commitments such as renting a space, internet contracts, high insurance premiums and loans can indeed contribute to the overall cost of living challenges. Opting to rent rather than own a home can provide flexibility in terms of mobility and financial commitment. However, rental costs are often high, especially in areas with high demand and limited supply. Without the stability of home ownership, individuals face rent increases, frequent moves, and uncertainty about their housing situation which strain their finances in the long run. But for me, I would rather keep staying with my parents than go out in foot bills that are way more than my pay grade. Such a great idea. Younger Americans living with their parents longer to save up for a shot at the American dream of owning a home. But a few things I want to remind people of and why this is a good idea. First of all, if you're going to rent and split an apartment, it's going to be about a thousand bucks. If you live by yourself, it's about $2,000 plus utilities, internet, food. A lot of your parents are probably going to hook you up and not charge you for internet or food if you stay at home. So if you can do that for two years, three years, four years, you could save up forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars and put that aside as if you were going to pay rent. That the economy is so bad that companies are downsizing and cutting staff and making one person do the job of three and four people. Companies are pinching pennies. They're lowering wages. They're not giving raises or bonuses. The cost of everything has gone up exponentially. Trying to get an education to get out of your field, to get into another field to make money, isn't working either because the cost of, the cost of education has gone up several hundred percent. This sentiment does not work when there are people who have been in their jobs for years, who have degrees, who have work experience, who have been with a business for like 10, 15 years. They're being let go. Taxes, both at the local and state levels, hold a substantial role in the cost of living. Property taxes, income taxes, sales taxes, and other levies vary among individuals and families. Once I lose my job, I literally would stop living, as I still got bills to pay, you know. The cost of utilities and taxes can be compounded by other factors, such as housing costs, healthcare expenses, and education costs. It's all surprising that in the United States, your health insurance is tied to your employer. If you lose your job, you are no longer worth keeping alive. That's what that's saying. The convenience and accessibility of online shopping platforms can encourage impulsive spending behaviors as individuals succumb to the allure of flash sales, limited time offers, and personalized recommendations. We will have to look good, you know. Thanks to the prevalence of credit cards and buy now, pay later schemes, the shopping spree taking off the depression. After all, while inflation may be a formidable foe, it's not insurmountable. With careful planning, prudent decision-making, and a healthy dose of resilience. Ultimately, while spending culture can provide temporary satisfaction and fulfillment, it's important to strike a balance between indulging in life's pleasures and prioritizing long-term financial health and well-being. By fostering financial literacy, cultivating mindful spending habits, and re-evaluating societal norms around consumption, 
we can work towards building a more sustainable and fulfilling relationship with money. That will be all for today. What is your experience with the cost of living? Let me know in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and turn on the notification bell to get notified whenever we post a new video.